Breaking news. Snow to trade it. Oh my god. Did the mayor's made a move? Padres. You knew it was going to happen. You knew we were going to have a Mariners breakdown. I'm a Mariners fan. That's just what happens. I mean, we did talk about the fact that we haven't been in the playoffs for 19 years. We can do that. We can talk about the fact we never even sniffed a World Series before. We could do that as well. But we're just going to have a little chat about mostly the future of the Mariners. A little bit of the backstory, but mostly the future. So those lovable... Seattle Mariners. Have they uh, become the new age version of the Cubs? Maybe. Maybe, but that's okay because you know what? The Cubs won the World Series. And that shut a lot of haters up, so that's all we have to do. I'm sure that if we even got to the playoffs, that would probably quiet a lot of the hate and jokes that people like to make about the Seattle Mariners. One thing is for sure, the fans are loyal. Now, a lot of people like to talk crap about the Mariners. But that's okay. We can take it. We're a fan base built on, for the most part, disappointment. But we love our team. We're true to the blue. We have Soto Mojo. We stuck around after that bullshit fucking Eric Bedard trade. I heard Bedard's making the comeback. You know how many fucks I give? Now the Mariners. Before we get into it, might need a little beverage here. The Mariners. You know, there's a lot you can say about the Mariners. They've had a decent amount of talent on their team, whether through trades, signings, or drafts. But it just hasn't ever panned out the way it was supposed to. I feel like we might be turning the corner on that. But to just take a peek at some of the talent that Seattle has had, look at this group of guys here. That's right. At one point, the Mariners featured A-Rod, Ken Griffey Jr., Jay Buhner, and the greatest DH of all time in my mind, Edgar Martinez. Clearly that is probably pre-steroids A-Rod, as you notice he still has a normal sized neck and forearms. This group, as a kid, I thought, there's no way we're not gonna win every year. And it just didn't happen. Jay Buhner, I feel, was always underappreciated by a lot of people who didn't understand the awesomeness of Jay Buhner. I remember watching a game where he dove over a wall to rob a home run. That's the bone. And who'd have did Jay Buhner haircut night? It was just awesome. Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, when he was traded to the Reds, we got some decent players back. But I always miss Ken Griffey Jr. playing for Seattle. It's just, it felt weird seeing him in another uniform. And I really wish the injury bug hadn't have, have bitten him as hard as it did because I would have loved to seen what his numbers would be like had he not been injured so much. A-Rod, uh, him. did a pretty good laugh when he came back to Seattle with the Rangers and people were throwing Monopoly money onto the field. That was, uh, that was pretty funny. Edgar Martinez is one of those sports players that is just the definition of loyalty. This man played his whole career with Seattle. There was times, I'm sure, that there were trades proposed, but he stayed. Edgar is probably my favorite Mariner of all time. Um, no offense to, you know, Buner, Griffey, all the new guys coming up, but... Edgar was just watching him hit was just one of the most amazing times because his swing everything he did to go about hitting that ball was just amazing it was like watching art almost if you just look at the uh, the stats versus Mariano Rivera uh, Edgar was 11 for 19 with three doubles and two home runs yeah which is pretty impressive stats against Mariano Rivera. 
And keep in mind, Marion Rivera dominated the lead for years with essentially one pitch in the history of Mariners. Who could forget the last time we were in the playoffs? It was 2001. It was the season that Ichiro debuted in the MLB, and we won 116 games. And we had old Sweet Lou there in the dugout. Pretty sure everyone, myself included, thought this is it. There's no way we don't win the World Series. But as fate would have it, the Yankees would get us. Personally, my thought was that if we won 116 games, we had to have beaten the teams in the playoffs at least a couple of times. So I thought we'd be just fine versus the Yankees. But apparently the Yankees had revenge on their mind, as they were still pissed off about the double Edgar Martinez hit in the 1995 Divisional Series to win the game. Now what's happened since that series? Not a whole lot. Trades, free agents, players coming and going, haven't quite captured that miracle of 116 win seasons. Things have happened recently. Trades have been made. I think we're starting to look a lot better, and I think the future is going to be golden. Jerry DePoto has made some outstanding trades, I feel. Uh, that's just my opinion. Maybe people don't agree. I'm not sure. That's right. We got telling it for Robbie to know and Edwin Diaz. Kellen, it looks like he's going to be an amazing player. I had a friend who was a Mets fan, and no longer speaks to me now because of this trade. This trade uh, has not worked out well for the Mets so far. Uh, Robbie Tano has been suspended for the season for PEDs, and Edwin Diaz has just not been Edwin Diaz. This trade cost me a friendship because they were a Mets fan, and they were really, really pissed off about when this trade initially happened, and then the Tano PEDs just completely made them go crazy and lose their mind, apparently. Looks like that's one less Christmas card to mail out this year. Edwin Diaz is not Edwin Diaz. At least not the Edwin we had here in Seattle. Maybe Edwin just wants to come back to Seattle. I wouldn't mind taking another run with him, seeing maybe he can fit her out here in Seattle. I jokingly said a year ago that maybe Edwin's just purposely sucking and blowing saves because he wants to be released come back to Seattle. Let's not forget the other prospects we have. We have Sheffield, who looks like he's on his way to becoming a great starting pitcher. Left-hander with some velocity, some decent mix of pitches, and it really seems like in 2020 he was kind of figuring out. Now granted, it's a shortened season with COVID, but I think he could be a, he could be a very good pitcher going forward. We have a loaded outfield as well. We have Julio Rodriguez, who by all accounts is going to be a stud in the major leagues, and I cannot wait to see him get the call up. He forms two thirds of an outfield that is going to just be mind boggling good. Speaking of the outfield, the other third to that is none other than rookie of the year, Kyle Lewis. Lewis had a breakout year. Uh, I am excited about seeing this guy patrol the outfield for years. He's making Griffey style catches over the wall. I just, it, it brought back memories of watching Ken Griffey Jr. when I was a kid. I mean, Rookie of the Year this year, I'm thinking maybe we did an MVP in there at some point. I mean, it all of it's leading to that World Series ring, I feel like. Some people say that the coach, Scott here, is not the person to lead them to the promised land. I don't know. I, I tend to not get uh, on board with, like, blaming the coaches for stuff. Like, there's stuff that they can't control, injuries, and all that. But now, if you're, like, a bad coach, as you're just a dick, then yeah, that's definitely your fault. And I don't feel that, uh, that Scott is a dick. But maybe his coaching strategy isn't the best for the team. I don't know. These are things that I don't know. You know, that's for management, players, that month all work out. Is Scott, a, would I prefer Scott over, say, Lou Pinella? I don't know. I loved Lou. Sweet Lou would could take a bad Mariners game and made it fun to watch by getting thrown out in the fifth inning. At the end of the day, 
The Mariners, I feel, are built to make a playoff run soon. I've even said that my prediction was 2023 was when we did to the series. I know, I know, I think it's possible. I, I really do. I think if the Mariners are able to add some bullpen arms, uh, like say maybe an Archie Bradley, and maybe like a veteran, maybe two in the rotation, and I kind of feel like Kluber would make sense. Buy low, sell high, you know? Like maybe you did him for a real team-friendly contract for like a year, and then maybe he he comes out the date uh, in 21 just, you know, maybe like a 7-2 a and two record with like an ERA and like the low threes or something. And maybe you flip him to get prospects or maybe you keep him and let him just kind of do a sit in Seattle for another year after that. But all we can do now as Mariners fans is just is wait. We've waited a while. If our waiting for a Mariners playoff berth was a kid... They'd already be getting tanked in college playing beer pong. With that being said, what are your thoughts for the Mariners? Or what about your team? What do you want your team to do? Unless you're a Padres fan, then you've pretty much gotten everything. So that's this week's WTF Breakdown all about the Seattle Mariners. What do we have in store for next week's episode of WTF Breakdown? <laughs> We're going to discuss who has the best nuggets. So who do you think has the best nuggets? Go ahead and let me know. Catch you next time. Listen once, I listened again and again and again, and I think that that's what every baseball announcer has on a family is, is you're with them every day. And if you're a baseball fan, you have something to look forward to every day. It's not every weekend like a football announcer, every three days like a basketball announcer. But from February when pitchers and catchers report until Hopefully the end of October when the World Series comes, uh, you're with them almost every day for six months. You become a member of their family. And how well I know that because of the, of the letters I receive and the things people send me and, 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 and the, the letters I get uh, about how, you know, generations have grown up with me. And I feel a great responsibility because of that. Uh, to be fair, to be honest, uh, to not be too much of a homer. I don't think I'm too much of a homer. I, if it makes any sense, I try to be as objective as my subjectivity will allow me. <laughs> and that doesn't make any sense because you can't travel with a ball club 162 games during the regular season, be with them 32 games during spring training, 200 games a year, and not care what they do. You have to. And I certainly deeply care how the Mariners finish year after year after year. On the other hand, I have a responsibility to my audience to treat each game for exactly what it is. One 162nd of the season. Every baseball game has a different story. I think that's a romance, the beauty of the game of baseball. Every baseball game has a different story. I've done 13, 14 no-hitters. Never seen a no-hitter the same way. Uh, came close to a perfect game, but didn't see one. Uh, but it's that every night during a baseball game, I'll turn to my partner or he to me and say, have you ever seen that before? <laughs> and here I am seven or 8,000 games into a, a baseball announcing career. I think that's the magic of the game.